Hi everybody! My name is Liv and I'm an artist from Ontario, Canada. I started this YouTube channel to teach art to kids and I plan to upload videos about two to four times a month. We'll see how it goes. But if your kids enjoy following along to this paint along, please let me know. If they have suggestions, I would also love to hear what they'd like to paint. Um, yeah, so this is what we're going to paint today. It is a flower with a ladybug. And I thought it was the perfect painting to kick off spring because pretty soon the sun is hopefully going to be shining and lots of flowers will start to pop up and we might see a couple of these guys. So without further ado, I would like to get started. And also I will like link everything that you need in the description below. Enjoy. Okay, so for today's painting, we are going to be doing a flower with a ladybug on the petal, and it's super cute. And the first color that we're going to need is yellow. So I'm going to take this yellow paint and I'm going to cover the entire canvas. It's best if you use a square canvas for this painting, but you could totally do it with a rectangle as well. If you don't find a square, it is totally your call, but I like the way it looks with a square. So yellow paint, you're gonna need quite a lot um, because with this crafting paint especially, you really need to do two coats. So just cover that entire canvas with lots of yellow paint. I like to do the sides too. So all the way onto the edges and it's nice uh, to put something under so that you don't get paint all over your surface. Maybe some newspaper, some spare paper that you have laying around. I used a Bristol board underneath just because I wanted to protect my table. Although a yellow table would be kind of cool, but if you want to protect your furniture, please put a newspaper underneath. Mom and Dad will probably thank you. There we go, we have our first layer. I don't know if it's showing up on the camera very well, but there's a lot of white showing through on my canvas. So when this starts to dry a little bit, give it a minute or so, this paint dries very fast. You can go over it again with one more layer if you want to. Um, some people that I've taught this painting to before left it with a little bit of white showing underneath. We actually painted on wood, so they left a little bit of wood showing from underneath and it looked really rustic and cool. So this is your art. You can definitely decide if you want it to be a little bit more see-through yellow for a cool effect or if you want it to be opaque like mine, which means you can't see anything through it, but you can decide. But I'm going in again with one more layer because I want my canvas background to be really yellow.
And there we go. So I'm gonna rinse my paintbrush in this water. Just get it nice and clean because we're all done with the yellow for now. And then I'm gonna take some paper towel and dry off that paintbrush. And make sure it's nice and clean and dry and then we're gonna set it to the side. So I used a big paintbrush for my background. Oh, I messed up my background. Look at that. That's okay. I don't know if you know who Bob Ross is. Some kids that I teach know, which is kind of fun, but he was a really famous painter and his saying was, there's no mistakes in art, just happy little accidents. And sometimes the accidents that accidentally happen in art make them really cool and unique to you. So that's all touched up. I'm gonna dry my brush again. And as I was saying, you can use a big brush for your backgrounds. I used a big brush, um, but we're gonna switch to a smaller brush for the rest of the painting. So I'll show you what that's gonna look like. Just a smallish brush like this. This is gonna give you more control over your flower petals and all those small little details. So you're gonna need one big brush for the background and a small brush. You could tackle the whole background with a small brush, but it might take you like a few hours. So I recommend getting a big brush, but you could totally do it with a small brush. It's entirely up to you and how patient you wanna be with your painting. But we're gonna let this dry before we move on to the next step. Okay, so when our painting is dry to the touch, we can continue and this is the fun part, guys. So we're going to be doing a flower and we're going to draw the center of our flower. It's kind of like part of a circle, but if you don't feel comfortable doing it by freehand, then you can take a small plate, and I'm just using a marker, and you can literally just trace around your plate, and that will give you the perfect start to your circle. So, the next step is to grab some black paint and we are going to color in that entire circle with black, okay? I had to get a new plate, guys, because I was silly and I left my paint on the table and walked away while my painting was drying and my cat stepped in it and put yellow footprints all over my floor. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was fun. He's very mischievous sometimes, but... I love him. So anyways, you can use the same plate as before, but I am just starting fresh and we're gonna take the black and color in this whole circle, okay? So we're just gonna go to that outline and if you did it by freehand, then you would have had a line as well and all the way out to that outer line, we're going to paint black and then color it all in okay so just like that and very carefully around the edges so we keep it nice and circular and then you can be a little bit more messy on the inside it doesn't have to be as precise on the inside because it's all black but just around those outer edges, try to be careful so that we don't smudge it, okay? Because that is where our flower petals are going to be. I don't know about you guys, but I'm super excited for the flowers to start growing. And it should be within the next month or so, we should start to see some flowers popping out, I think. all the way to the side of your canvas. We're gonna make it look like the flower is kind of coming out from the side of the canvas. So make sure that you get it all the way to the edge on the side of your canvas. You can paint also down on the sides, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna leave it like this and my sides of my canvas will stay yellow. But if you would like to paint black all the way down, Go for it. It's your painting and you get to choose where you want it to go. Okay. And 
make sure you're taking lots of paint so that we don't get any of that yellow showing through. Nice and covered. So we have the center of our flower started and it's already starting to dry which is perfect because we're going to move right on to our next step. So rinse your brush nice and clean because we are going to be taking blue and we don't want to turn our blue black. So make sure that you really get that brush clean. Make sure it's nice and dry whenever we move on to our next step. Okay. So I am going to go in with some dark blue. You can use any color you want really, guys. It doesn't have to be blue. You could do a pink flower with purple or, you know, like my colors are blue and purple, but you could do whatever you want. This is totally your painting. So you go ahead and you make it however you feel, whatever your favorite color is. We just need to choose two colors. So our first color is blue for this painting, for my painting. Maybe yours is a different color, but I'm gonna show you where the first petal is going to start. So all the way up here at the top, we're going to make a point and then we're gonna bring our petal down like that. And this petal, kind of like our middle of our flower, it looks like it's going off the page. That just kind of gives our flower a 3D look. So be careful when you come down to this black here, guys, that we're just not quite getting it all the way into the black, unless you let your black completely dry, but we just don't wanna smudge out all that black because then you'll get a bunch of black on your petals and maybe that's not what you were going for. But if you want a black flower, go for it. But if you don't want your petals black, just be really careful whenever you bring it down, okay? So the next petal is going to go here. And you know what? When I teach this painting to other people, or other kids, I say, if your petal doesn't look exactly like mine, maybe it's pointing a different way. Maybe it's a completely different size. That is totally fine because you know what? Everyone's art is different. Everyone is going to have a different interpretation of these petals. And that's what makes art so much fun. It's kind of like people. If we were all the same, life would be kind of boring, don't you think? So I think the little special things that make every piece of artwork individually yours makes it unique. And that's pretty cool because that's like people. We all are different and that's why the world is so fun. So if your petals don't end up looking like mine, that's okay. Don't be hard on yourself. So our next petal we're going to go out to the side. Do, do, do. This is the petal where my ladybug is going to be. So I'm gonna to try to make it kind of flat there so I can have my ladybug there. But you know what? I've had kids who have put their ladybugs up here. Their ladybug's been flying, their ladybug's been down here. You know what? Put your ladybug wherever you think that ladybug looks good, okay? So, right now we're just outlining our petals. We are going to go back in and perfect them after, okay? But for now, just getting the basic idea of where we're gonna lay them out. Nice and pointy at the end. Okay. Another bump. And you know what? That's okay. So you see how there's a little smudge here? That's because I somehow got paint on me, but we can fix that later. So if that happens to you, I'm gonna show you how to fix it later. Don't worry. <laughs> so, and another petal right here. Boop. And our last petal, and this petal is also kind of going off the page like the first one that we did there we go 
we have our petals laid out. I'm just gonna show that it's like that there. Perfect. Okay, so our petals are laid out and the next step is going to be, actually, you know what? Before we move on, I'm gonna show you what you can do to try to fix that. I'm gonna get something. Okay, this is a Q-tip. So, if this happens to you, I want you to not panic because there aren't any mistakes, just happy little accidents, but we can fix them. So, just take your Q-tip and wet it and just gently scrub, 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 scrub as much as that paint off as you can. Sometimes you can't get it all, but you can get enough that we can probably fix it and blend it all in and you won't even know what happened, okay? So that's why it's so important to make sure that we're keeping our hands paint free because I think I got paint on my hands and then I smudged it. And I'm gonna go back in with just a little touch of yellow and accident averted. Can paint right over that and not a worry. Okay, and if you need another layer after, we can go back and fix it, but there we go. Anyways, so that's how you can quickly fix mistakes on acrylic paintings. You can take a Q-tip and wet it and scrub it away gently and there we go. So now back to our petals. So at the top of our petals, I want you to take blue paint and drag it down like that, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect. It is just literally dragging paint down carefully so that we don't have to scrub any more off the sides. I'm kind of messy and clumsy, so I usually make a lot of drips and mistakes in my art. But that's part of the fun, guys. So, just like that. almost landed on the yellow, but luckily it landed on the blue. All right, and you don't wanna to be too sparing with the paint. You wanna use quite a lot because texture is really fun and also that's gonna stop it from drying so fast. And we can kind of blend it a little better that way. So I'm gonna go like this, finishing up right to the edge. And you can take your time doing this. You don't have to do it as fast as me. I'm just trying to make this video as short and sweet as possible. So if you need to pause the video at any time to catch up, go for it. I'll be here waiting whenever you're ready. <laughs> okay, there we go. And voila, petals. Okay, so where we had that blue connecting to the black, we're just gonna go in there and make sure that it's nice and touching. The black should be pretty dry right now, so should be okay to go in and make sure that we have lots of blue down there because we want the blue to really stand out from when we're gonna add purple now. So make sure that we have lots of blue at the base. Thick line where it connects the petals to that circle that we made. There we go. Okay, so we can rinse our brush, make sure it's nice and clean, dry, and we're gonna go in with purple. Purple! So get yourself lots of nice purple there. You can use any color you want. I'm just using this. I like purple for my second color and we're going up. So exactly what we did at the top but we're doing it the opposite way at the bottom. And don't worry if you go over onto your black, we can touch that up after. No mistakes. Okay. Okay, and it's okay if you start to see that you're blending in like purple and blue, because that's the whole point. We're blending these together to make it look like a multicolored flower. 
it's gonna be so pretty. Okay. Make sure on the sides that you are leaving the blue showing though, because that is showing where the flower petals are. And without that line, it kind of just looks like a clump of colors together. So that really helps to make it all look like a flower. I'm not being super careful about this either. This is, this is the fun part. This is what's gonna make everyone's flower really individual and unique. And I really love seeing how this turns out whenever people do it, because everyone has a different idea. So in your petals, you're not gonna want any yellow showing in those petals. It's okay if there's some yellow showing in between where the petals are, see how they're in between there, but not where your actual petal is because then it looks like the petal is floating and not attached to the base. So if you have to go over the black, that's okay because we can fix it later with more black, okay? And then we're just gonna finish off this last purple on this petal. And we are going to do the fun part. So you can rinse your brush again, and we're gonna grab some white, like so. So nice and rinsed off brush. And I just dropped my brush on the floor. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, my brush is off the floor. So we're gonna go in with that white and you can mix it with your lighter color if you want to just to make it not so bright so i made a light purple like a really light purple and i'm just gonna go in the middle and that's kind of like our transition color between those two kind of blends everything together you know and if you want to go back in after with even more purple and blue to fix up where you think there's a little bit too much light color be my guest. I'm going to do that too after I'll show you how we do it. But this is just really to show that this flower has such a beautiful blend of color. So we're starting kind of in the middle of the flower and pushing, I'm pushing up, up because I think that helps it blend really well and look pretty cool. So I think art is so fun when you play with texture and color. You never know what you're gonna get whenever you blend out colors like this. Okay, looking good, looking good. So, it's really, really light. So maybe I wanna rinse my brush off and maybe I wanna add a little more blue at the top, you know, like coming down into it. And then you can kind of just play with that. It's all about blending. And when I say that to the kids that I teach in person, they all roll their eyes at me and say, oh, not blending. But it really is. It's about blending. Blending helps to make your painting look more realistic. See? It's pretty cool. So, take your time really go in there and try to blend those colors together. Nice transition. I might have put a little too much blue there, so I'm going back in and I'm going to fix it up. I'm going to go in here. I think this part is so fun because everyone's flower ends up looking so different at this point. Everyone has different lines and colors and 
blend it all together and it looks very cool. So I'm excited to see how yours turns out and I hope that some of you will send them to me because I would love to see them. Makes me happy when I see people enjoying art, being creative. All right, and you know what guys? I think I'm gonna add more purple. I like color. You can stop there. Maybe you stopped with the white and you really liked that there was a lot of white. But I want a little more purple at the bottom. So I'm just gonna give myself a little more purple. And the same thing, just a little bit of blending going on. Blend, blend, blend. Just to show that that flower really is full of different colors. You know, I think I'm happy with that. So, we can rinse our brush. If you're happy with that, with your painting as it is right now, then we can move on to the next step. But, if you wanna perfect things, pause the video and you can really go in there and make sure every petal is dark where you want it and light and just take your time, guys. There's no rush, okay? So, where I went over these lines with purple, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna touch that up. Cause I told you, I can be pretty messy when it comes to my art. Sometimes I just get really into it and don't take my time. And that's totally fine. So we have this all fixed, ready to go. See, no problem. So I'm gonna rinse my brush again. And this is the fun part, because this is where we can start to make our ladybug. And I think ladybugs are so cool. They're really pretty. And I really like when I find them in my garden in the summer. All right, so we have our red. And I'm gonna put my ladybug on this leaf right here but you can put your ladybug wherever you want. I've had kids put their ladybug here. I've had kids put their ladybug here. Here, flying. I have kids put two or three ladybugs. It's totally up to you. Maybe you want to have a bunch of ladybugs. And I think that would be pretty cool. So to make our ladybug, we're going to do like an upside down U. Okay. We're gonna make him go all the way down to the petal. So meet him on the blue. And you're gonna fill that in with your red paint. Fill in that upside down U. And you can do two coats if you think that the yellow is showing through too much. There we go. That's his little body. And here's a little tip. So this part's kind of hard. You want to use a brush that's really, really small, okay? If you don't have a brush that has a very tiny, tiny edge, like say that we were using this brush and we are going to do a highlight on our ladybug. This one would just put a big old white streak on your ladybug and that's not what we want. So you don't have to do this step if you don't have a very small brush, but if you have a very small brush, it makes it look shiny. So we're gonna add a little bit of white. If you have white that's not mixed in with your other colors, otherwise grab some new white. Just a tiny bit of white, the tiniest bit. And on his outer shell, I'm just gonna do a little boop. Just a little boop. It's like a little upside down U2. Just shows that he's shiny. Because ladybugs, they have like a hard shiny shell and the sun reflects on them, so kind of makes them more realistic looking. Okay, so now that we have our ladybug's body and his shell, we're gonna go in with our black. And we're gonna draw his little head. <laughs> so just his little head like that. 
So cute. And then you're going to take your brush. And if you don't have a good brush for this, guys, and you really want that precise dot, you can use the other side of your brush and dot. But my brush is pretty small and it works really well, so I'm gonna use that. And then you're gonna give your ladybug his polka dots. Just here and there, wherever you think that your ladybug could use a polka dot. And he should be looking something like that. So now, this part is kind of hard, and that's the antennas. I recommend that you use a really small brush again, and if you don't have a small brush, maybe you can use a Sharpie, okay? Because you don't wanna put like giant lines on your ladybug, it's gonna make him look like he has two big pigtails or something. And their antennas are usually small. Unless you want him to have a really big antennas, then go for it, but if you want him to look like mine, then you're gonna to wanna to use the smallest brush possible, okay? We're just going to put two antennas. So you're gonna to try to go very softly with a little paint on your brush. Two antennas. And at the end of his antennas, he has little boops. Little dots, like boop, boop. And there he is, it's pretty cute. So like I said, you can go ahead and you can Put more ladybugs. I mean, if you were really, really creative and you wanted to go a little bit outside of what I've taught you, you could draw a butterfly on the leaf. Anything, really, like a butterfly, a praying mantis, a beetle, go for it. <laughs> but this painting is teaching you the ladybug. Mm -hmm. So our final step, and then our painting is going to be done. Good job, guys. If you've made it this far with me, I'm really happy. And I hope that you are having fun, as much fun as I'm having. <laughs> Okay, so you can use this brush. We're gonna add some seeds, kind of like pollen inside of our flower. So that's gonna be little dots everywhere. You could use a brush like this, but I kind of find it, for me, easier to use a little bit of a bigger brush, but you use whatever you have, okay? And in order for us to get it nice, we're gonna take our paint, put it all over your brush, but then you're gonna wanna dab some of that paint off because we kind of want the black to show through. And we're going to do a circle. So let's do our circle outline, something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's like that. And then I want you to keep dabbing that paint off, getting more paint, making sure that there's not too much, and then gently, fill in this inner circle because that's where all the seeds and pollen are and that's where our bumblebees and little bugs are coming and collecting the pollen. There we go. You can take your time. Some people like to do a little bit of seeds. Some people like to do a lot. It's totally up to you what you guys want to do with your painting. And it's okay if there's a little bit of black showing through because that's how they kind of look in nature sometimes. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can kind of go in there and break up that circle a little bit so it's not so completely stark. Some seeds on the outside here and there. Beautiful. And there we have it, guys. Our ladybug flower is now complete. And I hope that you enjoyed this and I can't wait to have another paint session with you. So stay tuned for more and let me know if this was fun. Bye for now. All right guys, so there we have it. This is the dried painting. Yours probably looks a little different than mine and I honestly would love to see how your painting turned out. So if your mom or dad has Instagram or Facebook, have them tag me and I'll put the link or my, my tag below in the description for them to do so. Or send me a private message. I would so, so love to see your art. It makes me truly happy. And let me know if you liked it and what you think we should do next. I was thinking a jellyfish. Is that fun? I think it might be a sparkly jellyfish. Okay, see you there. Bye-bye.